just saw something move down there. We go down the substrate there. Go on then, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Guess what guys, I'm really excited because today is the day to put the Predators in the ecosystem tank. That sounds kind of like scary, doesn't it? But when I say Predators, they're just slightly bigger fish really that will pick off the weaker babies because you can't just keep increasing the population. It'll be detrimental to the tank, to the other fish, all of that. So you've got to get some sort of balance going on. And given that it's an ecosystem tank, it makes sense to create that balance. At the moment, there's no natural predators for anything in the tank, so population numbers would just go crazy, especially with Enla guppies. <laughs> Now you guys know me by now, I love the overgrown look, but in the last sort of six months or so, I've started to finally realize that you just can't keep it going like that because there's a short window where it looks great and very quickly after it looks too overgrown and just rubbish. At the moment, we're at that point where it'd be a really good idea to trim some of these long stems back. They're reaching the surface, they look great. The colors are popping through now that it's closer to the light as well. But if we don't do something about it now, in like no time at all, within weeks, it'll just look a mess. We've got to keep some sort of controlled chaos. <laughs> So how do we go about tackling something like this? Well, with most things in life, just jump right in. But the area that's standing out to me most to go for first is this area here. It's just, it's leaning over in a nice way, don't get me wrong. It's just that I feel like if that was further back in that area there, doing the same thing, it would fill out this whole section and close that gap. So to get it to do that, I need to trim right down somewhere down there. And then when I replant it, they should end up about this height and then that'll give them time to grow back again so that we're not constantly trimming. Look at these gorgeous fish. They're everywhere. Oh, I love Enla guppies. Is there anyone else? Is it just me? I can't be just me, but oh, they're such beautiful fish, aren't they? Where's my favorite? Where's my favorite? There he is. There he is there, that snake skin. That is a good looking fish, right? <laughs> Can I zoom in without it going all weird? There we go. Yes. So I'm hoping, well definitely, let's be honest, with the amount of babies I've got in here now, like they're everywhere, they're all at the back, look at that little one. Uh, with the amount of babies we've got in this tank, some of them have got to be that snake skin. That's the last one I've got. I think when I bought him, I bought a good three, um, a couple jumped, this was a long time ago by the way, um, nothing's jumping out of this tank. Look, so many people ask why I don't fill the tanks right up. So this amount here I found, a good inch or so, an inch and a half, something like that, is a really good level to stop the water and it just means that fish don't jump out. But anyway, let's get the trimming done and then we can get the predator fish in. I'm really pleased with what we've managed to do there because I've managed to trim it right back but still retain that sort of natural look. I've kept the odd bit like, you know, look at that Rotala green there right in the middle just poking up. I saw it there, I thought, it looks, looks nice, looks happy. I'm just gonna leave that one. <laughs> Little things like that and over this side again. So you've got the odd piece like here floating up, the ones in the background there. I just left those long as well. You know, they're not too near the surface which means we've got a good couple of weeks before they, they get up there. Actually, that is limb the feeler, isn't it? That'll probably be up there tomorrow. <laughs> and then, you know, like I, like you saw there, I put some weights on those back ones to put them in the corner just to sort of hold them in. Again, they're still trying to sweep round, and that is just because we have got quite a powerful little power head there blowing this front section to the back there. So anything in the foreground and in that corner gets quite a lot of flow. Everything else is pretty slow, and, and you know, it's sort of comfortable for a fish that isn't 
enjoying high flow. But fish go where they want. So, like, at the moment, all the guppies, they love going in and out of that flow. They'd love it. Look, see, they go back, then they'll turn around, and it'll start to swim back again. You know, they, they obviously enjoy it. They wouldn't do it. But the uh, predators that we're going to put in, they don't like a ton of flow. I mean, they're all from river systems, aren't they? So they're going to like a bit of flow. So i got a feeling they're going to hang out in this middle section, in between all these rocks, great little spawning places for them as well so we could be getting babies from the predators as well <laughs> that would be absolutely great wouldn't it so guys the fish that we're actually going to be putting into the ecosystem aquarium is my epistogramma vieja pair that i've got <laughs> in there i've had them for quite a while the tank that they're in was enjoyable to make but it's one of those that doesn't really change and i'm not that into it I think those fish would do much better in that big aquarium. Tons of space, tons of room to explore. I could do something else with that aquarium after then as well. As you guys fully well know, I'm just making excuses to do another tank. <laughs> so without further ado, ado, adieu, which one is it? Adieu. Without further delay, <laughs> let's get the epistogrammas in the ecosystem aquarium. And to be honest, it's not gonna be that easy. So there is the male at the back there, the hiding sea. Where's the female? She will be close by. Oh, there she is, right there. The colors are actually better than they're looking. It's just that the uh, floating plants and that sort of dull the light down. Um, the tank's a bit of a mess. It's quite naturalistic though, isn't it? That's sort of why I left it. But it's got clean, fresh water and all the fish are healthy. You know, we've got, we've got quite a few of these. What was it, about nine or 10 in there of these glow light tetras, which are awesome. Hello, she's coming forward now. Look, there you go, much better color. Very similar to the, the um, Hung Shloi they are. Not the same though. I mean, look at the redness of the male. He's coming forward because they think I'm going to feed them. This might be a good chance, actually. I might try feeding and then netting at the same time because they're at the surface. They're getting ready for food. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Click subscribe. Okay, mission successful with the male. That went super smoothly, as you could see. Um, I, I was pretty surprised myself. Stuff doesn't normally go to plan, does it? Right, there she is. She knows the food's there. She's pecking on it, so hopefully she's distracted. Let's try again. There, uh, you see that? That was no good. She's far more wise. She shot right back there somewhere. I don't even know. Ah, there you go, look, she's coming around here now, she's coming forward again. I think I need to come in from behind so she can't get, she's so fast though. This is gonna be tough. Right, what to do? I think I might double net, double net method. Yeah, she's still too clever. I'm gonna leave that in there. Hopefully she comes forward and it means I won't have to, you know, break the water surface when she's in the foreground. I can just come around from the back and from the side with the other net. Hopefully that'll work. If not, I'm gonna take the whole thing apart. <laughs> Success. Again, I wasn't expecting it to work. That's why I was lining you guys up with that. I'm going to take it apart thing because, yeah, this isn't working. But yeah, worked a treat. Ideal. So there's a top tip for you. Just hang a big net in there and wait for the fish to come in front of it. Ideal. So there they are. They seem pretty calm. Let's get them in that new tank. Right, okay, I think the best bet is gonna be to place them in that back area there. They can work their way down uh, into the foreground if they want. They might like swimming in the flow, I don't actually know, but if I put them somewhere at the back in the middle there, they can choose, can't they? Right, here we go. I've got a feeling they're just gonna hide straight away anyway, so that's fine. They'll get used to their surroundings then. Oh, I'm struggling a bit here. Right, here we go. See what they do. Gone and gone. Okay, take that out, so there they are going that way. See you later. Never to be seen again. 
Right, I'm just going to come back for a while and then we can just see what they're doing in a little bit. I want to see their behaviour. They're going to hide for a bit, aren't they? It's all brand new territory. So the mailer has dived straight into that little trident java fern. Um, he's just staying there at the moment. That's fine. He obviously feels like that's the safest spot, but he'll be fine. He'll come out soon in his own time. I really can't wait to see him sort of hanging around. I've got a feeling they're going to hang around this middle section. I don't know why, because they can predate in that area, but also they've got really good hiding places either side. So that's going to be cool to see. Female is already down there. Did you see? Oh, she was just there then. Come back. Come back, female. <laughs> Male, just chilling. Oh, he's moved. He's moved slightly. Yeah, like I say, look, this is that middle section, and you can see all the babies in there. For some reason, they always seem to hang around in there. And there's all different sizes, look. So there's different generations as well. Tons of food sources. But those fish, if they're, any, if they're healthy and doing well, they're going to get away, aren't they? I mean, endlers are quick. Even the babies are quick. And I know Epistogramma are as well, but... Are they as fast? I mean, the more streamlined bodies of the uh, the endlers, you would have thought would mean... Hey, hear that? I said thought, not thought. You guys have been telling me off for my pronunciations. <laughs> but you would have thought... Oh, I did it straight away. You would have thought that the endlers would be quicker. Oh, that's a new one growing up. There's a new baby growing up that's coloured up. Okay, so it's generic. It, gener I hate saying generic. Um, classic? The classic coloured endler. That's cool. I really like those as well. So they're like more like this sort of natural wild colour. And most of the other ones are variations that we bred different lines of. Any of you guys worried about temperature? Um, I know most of you know, but some of you that might be new to the channel. I heat the whole room. Uh, and the room is heated, so it's warm enough for the fish. There's no heaters in there. The only thing in this tank is that. That right there. It's just like a power head with a sponge in it. And voila, a nice cheap light. I love this tank. I absolutely love it. Okay, you're never going to get that really high-end look that you get with the, you know, like Green Aqua's uh, skates, for instance. They're all done high-tech and they look insane. It's another level. It's another cost um, if you're into it. I would suggest start with something like this. And if you really are into it and you know you want to spend the cash, you can move on up. You can get the expensive lights, the expensive filters, the CO2 injection, all that kind of thing. This is just a really good way of starting it. So you've got the tank I paid about £220 for, which is about $300. This filter thing here is like £20, $30. The light, £30, $40. That's it. I mean, I'm, I built the stand. Um, I'm no carpenter, but it wasn't expensive either. So I think all in, we're looking at £500, $600 for a nice big aquarium that I think looks good. Now, in terms of materials, obviously, you can double that again for materials and plants. That's if you want to sort of buy them from shops. If you want to go foraging and look for stuff yourself, again, there's ways of keeping it cheap and there's plenty of good stuff out there if you're willing to hunt for it. You know, driftwood on the beaches can be good. Any driftwood that's, you know, in, in the river that's caught up in, in rapid areas works really well. There's loads of options. you just got to sort of think outside the box and put in the extra work if you're not willing to spend the cash. But the results are more than doable. I've done it before. And in fact, I might do that again. I might go foraging for, um, you know, driftwood and stuff and see what I can create. Got to be careful of taking rocks and things from wildlife because there are different rules for different countries and states in America and things like that. So find out what you are allowed to do first. Okay, just as suspected, the female is in that middle area. So I did, oh, I'm scaring her off. So behind the back, there's a little clear sort of opening. I just obviously showing you where I am in uh, relation to the tank. Behind this rock, I left it sort of open so that the fish could get backwards and forwards, uh, left and right, sorry, and space for more plants to go in. And that seems to be where both of them are. I'm probably not gonna be able to get it on camera, but I looked through that little gap there. I think that's the male. You can see the color of it there. Um, I'm not certain, but, um, ah. There's the female again. Can you see her? Just in that gap. Oh no, that's the male. No. That's the female. Oh, this is so hard to focus. There we go, manual. So she's in there now. So if I zoom back, it's there. That whole section behind is where they're both hanging out. Hanging out? Is that, is that the right word? There we go, look, there's the female. So this whole rocky area seems to be where they prefer to be. They're the sort of uh, fish that don't like being constantly out in the open, so that's cool. Being very brave here. Come on then, come on out. Come and have a look. She's obviously spotting some babies because I'm staying so still here that I don't think she'll even notice me. You can probably feel the vibrations from my voice. Um, but this is so cool, isn't it? Oh, I love it. Really do want to see a bit more of the male though. I did again see him in there, but he shot across so quick. We can't be too greedy though. It's only been about 10 minutes since I put the fish in. To be honest, I'm surprised I'm seeing them at all at this stage. Okay guys, it's now been an hour. Um, there we go, there's the male, look at that. Yes, 
I'm right back and zoomed right in, so the uh, the quality might drop, but I, I don't go any closer at this stage. So they are both hanging around this section. I keep looking over as I'm doing my editing, and uh, oh, I need to move. Hang on. Unlift. There we go. Oh, I'm trying to be so careful. So this is actually the first time I've seen either of the two epistogrammas go across into this section. Good to know they're exploring, they're getting more confident. Oh, another fun fact. Oh, there we go, look. Hello, fella. So he's in the middle. He must be hunting. Or maybe he's just getting used to his surroundings. I mean, there's fish all around him. I'm not seeing any sort of aggression yet. But there's still plenty of time. I mean, for all I know, he could be right now actually just picking some out. He's pecking at something in there. And obviously brand new babies are very small and they hang around in like plants and things like that. Either way, adding another species to the tank is so much fun and it's just, you know, it's adding a whole new dynamic rather than just looking out for the, the breeding of the fish. Don't get me wrong, I love seeing all the new babies and everything, but there's only so many babies you can look at. It takes a while for them to start getting colour in that, you see. But now we've got some real interest, haven't we? Okay, there we go. Look. Oh, oh, no, he's seen me. He must have seen me there to go back. He's definitely hunting, I think. Those sort of still movements coming in and out. Either that or he's just checking out the whole area. But something interesting as well, guys. So down there, look, you can see that I've got a nerite sna nerite? Nerite snail. There you go. You can just about see it there. So it started laying eggs all over here. And you can see there, look at those white dots. Those are the nerite snail, nerite snail eggs. But there were way, way more. So the good thing is they're being eaten. I don't know what they're being eaten by, if it's the uh, fish or if it's the, oh, that baby's there, <laughs> or if it's the Amana shrimp, or if maybe it's the sucker, oh, female and male in the background. Yay. <laughs> okay, we're seeing them quite a bit now. This is awesome, isn't it? So they're obviously getting a lot more comfortable with the surroundings. They're going to come around this way. That'd be so cool if they popped out now. Come on, come on, just pop out, just pop out. No. Yeah, anyway, it might also be the bristle-nosed plecos that are actually um, eating these off of the rocks as well. So it's good to know that you, you can use a cleanup crew to get rid of those snail eggs. So this is interesting, look. The male is coming right forward. He was right out there. He was right on the snail, taking a little look. I guess he's never seen one of those snails before. There's probably a lot happening in the tank right now that he has never seen at all. Obviously, endler guppies for a start. <laughs> Neurite snail for second. <laughs> Such a beauty this one as well. And the female look, she's in the foreground as well. She was just come all the way along here. So you can see there's some quite fast flow going on here, isn't there? And that simulates really a river, doesn't it? Let's be honest, because you've got fast areas, you've got slow areas, and it's really good enrichment as well for the fish, isn't it, to be honest? Oh look, there she is, she's having a little look. That area there will be pretty much a sort of no flow zone or low flow zone. But it's hard to tell if she's hunting or just exploring. I mean, she doesn't seem to be showing any signs of aggression to any of the other fish. So I think at the moment they're just exploring. Right, it's now been 24 hours since we put the fish in and the male is behind me right now and right out in the open, completely comfortable. So that's brilliant to see. Hopefully I can get some, like, some of their predatory instincts on show. But it doesn't matter if we don't. I mean, there's plenty of time to see all this. 24 hours is still a very short period to put a fish in and it just to behave normal, isn't it? There we go, look, there's the male. So just some context, <laughs> he's right there. And he's been here all morning so far. I've been in the studio now for a good, I don't know, half an hour. And uh, it's 5 five a.m. at the moment. So oh, there's a baby look right next to him. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? So, yeah, there we go. Look, the nice little area in the middle there must be just where they feel really comfortable. In the oh, look, there's loads of little babies in there. He's coming back out again. Well, we don't want him to necessarily to, you know, eat all of them, but... He will pick off some small ones, some ones that are too slow or whatever. That's exactly, you know, mimicking sort of nature, isn't it, really, in a relatively small glass box. I mean, it's a decent size aquarium, isn't it? It's not like the fish have got nowhere to hide. So, oh, there we go. That's definitely, that's definitely a predatory action there. He's going for something, isn't he? What are you looking for? Is there something down there? I'm a good distance as well from him at the moment. I'm zoomed right in. But he's definitely hunting, isn't he? Look, look, waiting perfectly still. He's got his eyes fixed. Oh, I just saw something move down there. We go down on the substrate there. Go on then, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Are you going to get it? See, nowhere near quick enough. It's gone before he's close. So basically, the only ones that are going to get picked off are the slow sort of not developed well, I guess. How cool is that? <laughs> 
colors are insane. So, so nice. That red is just like fire, isn't it? Well, I'm really pleased anyway that we've managed to get some sort of hunting on camera. It's only gonna get better. I mean, to be honest, he's never had to hunt before, so he's gonna be really bad at it as well. It's gonna take time before they get good. Well, I think that's been a massive success. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. It means the world to me. There is so much more coming up, including for this tank. I wanna add more fish as well. More of a cleaner crew, I think, next, like, you know, some loaches or something like that. Let me know what you think. What would you like to see next in this tank? Remember, we can't be putting, like, massive fish in there or just destroy what we're trying to create. But I think some nice quarries or something like that would look good in the bottom there. Something to get that um, sort of movement down in that lower area, because at the moment there isn't anything apart from the Amano shrimp, really. We're trying to create a balance, though, so I don't want anything that's going to require loads of numbers and things like that. <laughs> anyway, if you haven't already, click the like and subscribe button. Obviously, if you like this video and want to subscribe to my videos, click the notification bell as well, and I will see you on the next one. Cheers, guys.